the Hiroshima and Nagasaki bombing, the Japanese have a side to what really took place at Pearl Harbor. And the Americans have a side. Right here in America, the North has a side and the South between the Confederates. So as we jump through history, when groups of people encounter each other, whether it's in war or in peace, if they are literate and record, then they keep a record of the experience. Now, if their societies or their empires or their kingdoms are utterly destroyed, you may not ever find the records. But if these people have left walls with writing, giving recipes, and diagnose medicine, chemical formulas, like the Egyptians did, you follow? Or like the Sumerians did on the cune cuneiform tablets, they kept records of everything that took place in their life. If this is the way humans do when they encounter, just like if you had a fight with somebody, you remember who that person was and you remember it in your mind, and if you have to write it down, if you go down to the police department and have to file a complaint, you'd have to write out the encounter. You understand? So if a Jew, Israelite, anything you want to go, came into Egypt and took over and became the Pharaoh, as they claim Yosef did, or Joseph, it would be on record somewhere, wouldn't it? If Abraham came in there, and the Pharaoh, as I said a couple of weeks ago, ignored all the beauty of all the beautiful Egyptian women and just wanted Sarah. And they said, it just couldn't tell the story. They had to add a little self-ego in it. They don't want, they want Sarah. He don't want no other beautiful Egyptian woman. He wants Sarah. That would be on. And it's up to you to demand when the reverend starts to talk about any of the men of the Bible going into Egypt to say, could you please, ma'am, show me where I can find some Egyptian tablet that verifies that there was a Joseph or a Moses or an Abraham or an Isaac that came into Egypt and had such an impact as to work their way from prison from being a soothsayer let me stop there, and let's, because that's important that you realize. Because they so good with the way they trick you, that what you're not realizing is that Joseph is guilty of being a soothsayer. He's interpreting dreams, something that's against the law in Israel. That's illegal. That's called a sin, a sorcerer. A warlock. That's an evil thing to do. You don't interpret dreams. You don't do the stars. You don't deal with, uh, what do you call it? Enchantment. Those are illegal practices in Judaic teaching. So now how did Joseph justify acting like a warlock or a soothsayer or a palm reader and telling someone's dreams which got him to become the new pharaoh? And all the Christians and the Jews and the Muslims, while they're reading that story, they ignore that major point. That he was violating the law. And he became a pharaoh. How can you be an Israelite and deny your nature, your culture, and your religion and become an Egyptian who worships dogs, hippopotamus, crocodiles, birds, and the likes without being guilty of being apostate. Without being guilty of deserting your belief or religion for another. How could Joseph become a pharaoh in a paganistic society until Jacob got there? I ain't finished. How does he justify a lie to do right? He lied to his brothers and he tricked his brothers. He had somebody stash something inside their camel bags and then accused them of stealing it and aggravated his father 
all the way from Jerusalem to Egypt, thousands of miles back then. They make it sound like he got on a concord and flew over there. Jacob was going after his son because they thought his son was dead. You understand? Thousands of miles, this old man was being tormented by that fear. They want to know why he died in Egypt. <laughs> but Joseph justified lying to his brother to play a trick. And then at the end of it says, don't you see? I am your brother Joseph. And that made his lie all right. See, while they're telling us these stories, they are subliminally poisoning us. They're making us able to accept wrong teachings, lies. So that when we start to question, we already have a guilt complex. When I start saying, well, I don't believe that story. Can you produce the evidence? I can produce the evidence of a Ramesses, of a Seti, of a Hotep. I can just produce abundance of information about the great Egyptians. I can also do the same about the great Sumerians, two Negroid races. But I can't find you in your own history unless you are coming in contact with a substantiated or verified group of people.